Hello, my name is Travis Armstrong and I'm an instructor in the Radiologic Sciences Department at Boise State University. I'd like to talk to you today a bit about medical imaging and uh, our programming here at Boise State. So I'd like to start today by defining what the profession is, give you a sense of uh, a day in the life of a radiologic technologist, Talk about uh, different modalities or different subspecialties. Um, talk about uh, what, what the career outlook would be for an individual that would pursue uh, this profession. And then finally, I'd like to talk about uh, Boise State's Radiologic Sciences program. So a question for you. What's the difference between a radiologist and an X-ray technologist? The question, this comes up a lot because um, many times the, the terms are used incorrectly. Uh, a radiologist is a physician that has uh, an incredible amount of training, many, many years of training, uh, and they are the individual that uh, reads uh, different kinds of images created by the technologist. So these would be your standard x-rays uh, as well as CT, MRI, ultrasound, and many other different types of imaging studies. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the career path of an x-ray technologist, like the gentleman on the right. Uh, in terms of terminology, um, it can be somewhat confusing. X-ray technologists can, can go by that term, certainly. Also called um, radiographer, Rad tech or radiologic technologist or x-ray tech or x-ray technologist. Um, typically, don't, um, we don't refer to radiographers as x-ray technicians, um, but instead uh, go by technologist. So another question for you. Who's had an x-ray before? My guess is a good number of you have had an x-ray before. I know I certainly have. And your experience may have looked something like this. Uh, the technologist um, gets you from a waiting room, introduces themselves, asks you some questions, and then um, <clears throat> does what we call positioning, uh, obtains the radiographs, um, thanks you, and sends you on your way. And then at some point, you get a, those results where the radiologist would have read the, read the, the exam, read the um, radiographs that were taken and generate a report, and then results would have been communicated to you. Well, um, I would like to say that that certainly is part of what a radiographer does on a day-to-day -day basis, is maybe take an extremity x-ray like you had, maybe that was a shoulder, a wrist. Um, but I, I would say that depending upon the setting that a technologist works in, um, that could be um, just a small part of what a technologist does. So most technologists are employed by hospitals. So locally that would be St. Luke's uh, downtown, St. Luke's Meridian, St. Alphonsus downtown, uh, generally larger hospitals. And yes, yeah, certainly they uh, those technologists could do x-rays uh, in that room, uh, that, that exam room like you experienced. Uh, and it might look something like this on the bottom left. The technologist would, again, uh, uh, introduce themselves, take some x-rays, okay? Uh, in this case, this patient is get, obtaining a chest x-ray. Uh, and you can see the result here. But in the hospital uh, setting, uh, of course, you have the emergency room. And patients come in after all for all kinds of reasons to include trauma situations. And uh, oftentimes, technologists needs to take x-rays with a portable x-ray machine. And that's what we see here at the bottom right, a portable version of this fixed unit on your left. And so this mobile unit can go up to all the hospital on the hospital floors, the patient's rooms, and also can be utilized in emergency situations. So this would be an example of a patient that came in through the emergency room, maybe a car accident, and they have a fra terrible fracture to their hum humerus. And this technologist would have taken those x-rays that would have aided in the diagnosis. That same patient 
would have then uh, gone to surgery at some point. Maybe the next day that that uh, that patient needs to go to surgery, and a technologist then in the surgical setting would operate what's called a C arm. Now a C arm is a mobile uh, fluoroscopy unit, and that's in contrast to a fixed fluoroscopy unit. Now what's fluoroscopy? Well, you can think of fluoroscopy as uh, a making a movie or a video. If taking an x-ray is like taking a snapshot or a photograph, utilizing fluoroscopy is like uh, taking video. And so it's, it's more dynamic in real time. So that a technologist the next day, potentially even the same technologist that took this x-ray, could be then find themselves in surgery operating this mobile fluoroscopy unit. And an orthopedic surgeon could be uh, fixing that fracture of that left humerus. And this is what that might look like uh, after that humerus has been fixed. And then finally the next day, a technologist might find themselves assisting a radiologist in the fluoroscopy suite, uh, doing all kinds of different studies utilizing the fluoroscopy machinery. So for example, here we have an image of a swallowing study or an esophagram. And this patient would uh, drink what's called barium, uh, what we call contrast. And we can see the barium. It shows up as white. And the, the swallowing mechanism for this child could be evaluated. Maybe they are having a difficult time swallowing. And uh, food is going down into their trachea and causing um, pneumonia, what we call aspiration pneumonia. So we could use fluoroscopy, and the technologist could... Uh, assist the radiologist to complete a study to to um, to help diagnose this patient. So what are the strengths and skills of a great radiologic technologist? Well first and foremost anybody that goes into healthcare needs to certainly have a high amount of compassion. You really want to make a, uh, we, we're looking for people that want to make a difference in the lives of others and in their community need to have strong communication skills. We always say that working in medical imaging uh, is a team sport. We have to be able to work alongside uh, our colleagues, be it other technologists, nurses, physicians, uh, in a way that um, uh, is very fluid and positive, not to mention being able to uh, put our patients at ease, uh, utilizing really um, uh, clear communication because oftentimes, as you can imagine, patients are, are under a great deal of stress and having good communication skills goes a long ways. Uh, need to bring big energy to this, this profession. Um, it, it, is, um, it can be demanding physically on your feet, moving around the hospital, sometimes having to work very quickly, and uh, it can be both physically and mentally demanding. So bringing a high amount of energy every single day to work. Uh, we, we are so blessed to have uh, ever-evolving and improving technology, um, which is one of the great benefits of working in this profession, um, and one needs to be comfortable um, utilizing that technology. And finally, once again, working in healthcare, working in medical imaging is a team sport. So being a reliable individual that shows up to work on time, ready to roll when one shift starts and can be counted on is, is incredibly important. So reliability. So here in the Boise State Radiologic Sciences program, I'll talk for a moment just about the curriculum. So the classroom component, what we call didactic uh, teachings, uh, cover, these are some of the major topics that are covered. There's certainly others as well. You certainly, this is actually a picture of two uh, past students practicing in our own lab. We have a lab with two energized x-ray rooms that actually take radiographs. Um, and they would be coming uh, in the lab. They're becoming more familiar with uh, operating the equipment and in a way that's safe. Um, they're certainly uh, also working on what's called positioning. Uh, so every if you had an x-ray in the past, you understand that uh, you were put in a variety of different positions to obtain a different radiograph so that um, your injury or lack of injury could be diagnosed. Um, we certainly 
students learn about the physics, what's happening at the atomic level. We do x-rays are a form of radiation, electromagnetic, radi electromagnetic radiation, and so certainly learn what's happening on the atomic level with that radiation. Also learn about the effects on the body uh, when uh, radiation interacts with the body. That's what we call radiobiology. And then finally, it's important that technologists work on their uh, student technologists work on their leadership skills, communication skills, and also have a firm grasp and understanding of the different laws and ethics that are applicable to the profession. Uh, beyond the classroom, students spend a good deal of time in the clinical setting. So it depends upon the semester, but students can spend anywhere from two to five days in the clinical setting completing what we call clinical rotations. We aim to get our students out to a wide variety of uh, clinical experiences, everything from the large hospital trauma center, su such as St. Alphonsus downtown, to smaller clinics uh, or orthopedic clinics, such as a primary health or a St. Alphonsus medical group uh, orthopedic clinic, and everything in between. Uh, we look to have a nice range of experiences for our students. Students admitted into the Radiologic Sciences uh, Diagnostic Radiology Program, uh, those students upon graduation will earn a Bachelor's of Science degree and they will then uh, be able to sit for an exam to become a registered radiographer. So they would become a radiographer, again also called an X-ray technologist. Here at Boise State, students can do further training. They can go into CT or computed tomography. They can go into magnetic resonance, resonance imaging, or MRI, or they can go into diagnostic sonography. In terms of uh, employment and advancement, we're very fortunate that graduates of our program see um, very high levels of job security. As a matter of fact, um, most of our second year uh, students actually receive jobs and are working before they ever graduate. Um, we, we've been blessed with a very strong um, uh, a job market here locally in the Treasure Valley with growth and so um, our graduates are highly sought after and um, my personal experience is I've never met a radiologic technologist who was good at their job and they wanted to work that did not have a problem finding a job ultimately. Here's an example of some starting wages locally for radiologic technologists, 20 to $25 an hour, and then uh, starting wages locally for those that go into a specialty or uh, what we call a modality, CT, MRI, ultrasound. And then finally, uh, there's never any reason to get bored in medical imaging. There's always opportunities to grow and advance professionally, and I'll talk about some of those. We often say that medical imaging um, is really an umbrella term, and there are quite a lot of professional paths that fall underneath the term of medical imaging. And here's just a few, or, or a good number. This is not all inclusive. There are other paths that one could take, but here are some examples of paths that an individual could take uh, with some, some further training, whether that's further schooling, on-the-job training, or so on. I'm going to concentrate on a handful of those different modalities to give you a sense for that. So as stated, we have a ultrasound or sonography program here at Boise State. Uh, it is a year-long program. Typically, individuals that go into sonography have gone through our diagnostic radiology program and then continue on. Or in um, certain cases, an individual that already has advanced training in, uh, in, in a healthcare field such as a, a nurse, respiratory therapist, could go straight into this program. It's a, it's a year long, so fall, spring, and summer semester. By definition, diagnostic medical sonography is the visualization of structures of the body by recording the reflections of pulses of high frequency sound waves directed in the tissue. A person who specializes in, specializes in this field is known as a diagnostic medical sonographer. It is quite a skill and an art 
to obtain the images that uh, are created using um, a sonography machine, ultrasound machine, um, and as such, the phys physicians, radiologists rely heavily upon sonographers and their skill set, and uh, sonographers report a high level of job satisfaction. They really love their jobs. Computed tomography, also known as CT for short. Uh, it's another program we here, have here at Boise State. Uh, this program is a semester long. So typically it'd be for the fall semester or the spring semester. Uh, and individuals that go into CT are invariably already practicing uh, radiographers have graduated from a diagnostic radiology program. Uh, by definition, CT is the recording of a predetermined plane in the body using an X-ray beam that is measured, recorded, and then processed by a computer for display on a monitor. This technology allows physicians to visualize patient anatomy in various sectional planes. So, much like general radiography or X-rays, Computed tomography utilizes x-rays as well, but it, it's able to create very highly detailed images uh, and even uh, can, it's very good at uh, seeing soft tissue as well. So in this image you can see kidneys, you can see brain uh, in this image in the top right. So this, this um, CT is, is a critical part of um, the imaging or diagnostic process in especially the emergency room. Uh, it's hi highly leaned upon by emergency room phys physicians because of these wonderful images that are obtained. MRI or magnetic resonance imaging. No doubt some of you have maybe had an MRI uh, at some time in your life. Um, here at Boise State, we our program is a two-semester program, so it lasts the fall and the spring semester. And uh, MRI uses a strong magnetic field and radio waves along with the computer to generate sectional images of patient anatomy. Like CT, this advanced technology uses highly specialized equipment and requires specialized education. So um, MRI, much like CT, uh, creates sliced images uh, of, of anatomy. And as such, like CT is, is wonderful at creating highly detailed images. And um, in contrast to CT, it does not use uh, X-rays or what we call ionizing radiation. Uh, and it has different strengths than CT. So CT is superior in imaging certain pathologies versus MRI, which is better at uh, imaging other pathologies. So uh, oftentimes, uh, it, uh, something like this, where a, a lumbar spine um, MRI could be um, done to look for if, if a patient has a herniated disc. And this is the imaging of choice for that, typically. Some students from our program choose to go into nuclear medicine. That is not a program that we offer here at Boise State. There is a program uh, at Weber State uh, in Utah, which is where a lot of uh, local students choose to do their training. Now, nuclear medicine uh, involves procedures that require the use of radioactive materials for diagnostic or therapeutic purposes. Nuclear medicine procedures usually involve the imaging of a patient's organs, such as the liver, heart, or brain after the introduction of a radioactive material known as a radiopharmaceutical. Radiopharmaceuticals are usually administered intravenously through an IV, but can be administered orally or by inhalation. So nuclear medicine is quite interesting. Instead of a machine that um, is sending x-rays to the patient to create an image, instead the patient, uh, either through an IV or through is ingest, radioactive materials, what we call radioactive isotopes, and a detector then detects where those radioactive isotopes are at in the body. And this, this uh, uh, profession uh, is it used for lots of different applications, but certainly is uh, beneficial to help diagnose many types of cancers.
Radiation therapy is also a very interesting field for uh, the right individual. Uh, certain, um, many times, uh, x-ray technologists who have an interest in um, treating cancer or helping to diagnose cancer go into not only radiation therapy, uh, but oftentimes mammography as well. Um, and it, it's, this is anecdotal, but certainly... Uh, it's been my experience that individuals that have uh, unfortunately had family members or loved ones uh, that have uh, had to deal um, with cancer um, are, are drawn to this field uh, because they want to make a positive difference. So a radiation therapist is a person who administers radiation treatments to patients according to a prescription and instructions of a physician known as a radiation oncologist. Radiation oncology involves the use of high-energy ionizing radiation to treat primarily malignant tumors, cancer. So uh, a radiation therapist works with a radiation oncologist, just a physicist, to uh, target uh, high doses of radiation to treat tumors. <coughs> Another field. Another subspecialty is interventional uh, radiology. There's also cardiac interventional radiology. Now, interventional radiology is a medical subspecialty of radiology utilizing minimally invasive image-guided procedures to diagnose and treat diseases in nearly every organ system. The concept behind interventional radiology is to diagnose and treat patients using the least invasive techniques currently available in order to minimize risk to the patient and improve health outcomes. These procedures have less risk, less pain, and less recovery time in comparison to open surgery. So interventional radiology uh, uses uh, um, x-ray, much like CT, much like general radiography, um, to help diagnose and ultimately to treat patients with all kinds of pathologies. Uh, this image on the right is some imaging of the vasculature of the brain. So it's, it's possible that, that the technologist and the physician are looking to uh, diagnose uh, a patient that potentially has a stroke. And not only do they have the opportunity to diagnose the stroke, but they can um, uh, help to remove, a, say, a blood clot and, uh, through a therapeutic process. And um, what is wonderful about this um, is that much like I stated in the definition of interventional radiology, it's, 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 it is not invasive. Historically, a patient uh, might not ha either have treatment for something like a stroke or might have to have uh, a large brain surgery. And so um, using interventional radiology techniques, this patient's recovery would be much quicker. They'd have fewer risks than going to having a major surgery. Um, it is much less invasive. I'd like to add on uh, interventional radiology that Boise State is currently developing a program in that field as well, much like C our CT, MRI, and ultrasound program, because there's such a high demand for that profession, uh, both locally and nationally. So after focusing on a good number of those modalities, there's also many other areas that individuals could grow into professionally. Uh, in medical imaging. Certainly always possibilities to go uh, into administration or management work to become to manage a radiology department. Uh, there's opportunities in um, the private industry, the, the companies that make medical imaging equipment such as Toshiba, Fuji, CareStream, uh, and many others uh, employ technologists to, to help train others or to, um, to work in sales. Uh, there are individuals that work uh, in the information technology side of medical imaging. So a PACS administrator manages all the, the storage of the images that are created in medical imaging. There's opportunities to become an educator, such as myself and my colleagues here at Boise State, to work with uh, the next generation of medical imaging professionals, uh, to work as instructors. Uh, and then uh, another possibility is to do further training and um, become a, uh, a radiology assistant uh, or a physician assistant. Nearly every single year, 
uh, we'll have a graduate from our program that will ultimately decide to do further training and become a physician assistant, um, become a, a practitioner. So a bit on applying to our program, to Boise State's Radiologic Sciences program. Uh, applications are due the second Friday in February every year. Uh, there are a number of prerequisite courses that must be completed or be in progress to apply to the program. Um, we need a GPA on certain courses at least 2.6 or higher. Uh, and the cumulative GPA for uh, can be no lower than 2.5. We require three letters of reference and finally an essay or a written letter of application. Uh, it is a competitive program, um, but please don't let that discourage you. But we do have uh, historically between 60 to 80 students apply every year for the program. And uh, over the last number of years, approximately uh, 28 students have been admitted to the program. These are the prerequisite courses. Uh, that are required to get into the program. Uh, of course, we are looking for individuals uh, through these prerequisite courses that have a good foundation in writing skills, uh, some of the sciences such as anatomy and physiology and chemistry, a uh, good understanding of math uh, and medical terminology, uh, and some proficiency with, um, with, with computers and technology uh, before entering into the program. If you are interested in pursuing a career in medical imaging or pursuing, pursuing studies in the Boise State Radiologic Sciences Department, uh, I direct you to a few resources. First, uh, I would check out these internet resources. The American Society of Radiologic Technologists, or ASRT, has a wonderful website with a lot of uh, resources about the profession or for uh, prospective students. Please check out Boise State's, um, our department's um, uh, website as well. You'll see information on the faculty members in the program. Uh, so those prerequisites are listed uh, and more um, specific information about all of our programs. Uh, the academic advisor we work with here on campus is Olga Salinas, and she knows our programs well. And here is Olga's um, uh, contact information. Please reach out to her for more information. And then finally, uh, we always recommend that you work to, uh, if you're interested in pursuing this field, please, please uh, take time to educate yourself about the profession. Uh, consider doing some volunteering uh, at a hospital or ideally in a radiology department. At a minimum, uh, work to do a tour of a radiology department when, it, when it's possible um, so that you can educate yourself. And uh, that helps to make you also a more competitive candidate when you apply to our program or others. And, don't, uh, and, and look to meet with uh, either faculty or students to ask questions, uh, the advisor, or if you know people in the community that work in medical imaging, an informational interview uh, is a wonderful way to go to educate yourself about uh, the profession. Thank you so much.